Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. I'm very excited. Element Earth is finally available on the Amazon App Store. I invite you to go check that out. I'd also like to thank everyone for their patience. I know during the past couple of weeks of me um, doing a whole lot of beta testing and stuff like that, I haven't had a lot of time for this channel, but I'm back with some really cool material. For example, right now we're going to be starting an epic platformer series and this series is going to be running alongside my networking videos because we're going to be making a multiplayer platform game. So because platform mechanics can at times be somewhat complicating, I've decided to separate it from my networking series and then what I'm going to do is after I've covered platforming, I'm just going to throw the code straight into there so no one will get confused. So this is basically what we're going to be creating. We have our man, he's got some sprites. He's running around, he's jumping, he can duck even, yeah, he can duck. Cool. And we've got all these little platforms. He's got collision detection, he can't go through tiles from the bottom. All kinds of really cool stuff that you'll need if you want to create your platform game. I've also got this really cool tile set from GameArt2D.com. Um, check them out, the link's in the description. They've also got some paid for sprites and stuff like that. They're really, really cool. Check that out. So... I'm going to be splitting this into several parts because there's quite a lot going on with the jumping and the moving left and right and the walking and running and sprinting. So all kinds of things. So we can walk, we can sprint, we can jump, we can crouch. And there's also falling. Detect when we fall. Cool that. So let's go through this and later on we'll be adding this to our networking series. So here we are within our somewhat empty project. If I open up my sprites I've got all the different states of our man. So in this case, he's standing, no sub images. We've got a running animation. See, there we go, he's running. We're gonna go to walk. There he is walking. Duck, I think it's just two. Very simple. And jump. All right, so over the next couple of episodes, we're gonna be putting these sprites to good use, depending on what the user is doing. And then also we have a block. This is just going to be our solid for now. Okay, so let's start off by creating our player. Let's give him the standing sprite for now. And let's initialize some variables that we'll need throughout the course of the series. All right. Initialize some variables. So we have gravity equals 1. We have SPD equals 10. These are all completely customizable. You can fiddle around with them as you please to get that most realistic movement you can uh, think of. J speed, that's our jump speed. This equals 12. Then we've got our H speed equals 0 and our V speed equals 0. Our state on start is going to be standing. Our direction, that's where he's looking towards, is going to be right. Okay, so he's not jumping, he's not falling, that's when we've started, when we've started off he's not jumping or falling, um, the game world friction, 1.3, then we need a walking acceleration, I'm going to put that at 0 0.2, then we've got our uh, walking max speed, let's put that at SPD divided by 3, we've got our running acceleration, equals 0 0.4 then we've got our running max SPD and let's set that to SPD so that's going to be 10 terminal velocity this is when we're falling let's set that to 50 I mean you could factor in um, gravity and the approximate weight of our player and all that stuff but I'm just going to give it a 50 for now cool stuff so those are all the variables we'll need throughout the series gravity, speed, jump speed Horizontal speed, vertical speed, our current state, which direction we're facing, are we jumping, are we falling, what's our friction, what's our walking acceleration, our walking max speed, our running acceleration, our running max speed, and our terminal velocity when we fall. Okay, so let's create a step event. Now, I don't usually do platform games. It's not something I fill around with a lot, so I did a little research, and um, you'll notice that I've taken a lot of inspiration from... Heartbeast and Sean Spaulding. Check out their videos and their tutorial series around platforming. So a lot of things will be similar. I don't feel the need to reinvent the wheel, but I will be adding on to their efforts with our spriting. Things that they may not have shown you guys yet. So this is going to be the script where we do stuff. All right. So I'm going to compartmentalize 
um, my different features that this player can do. So when we grab a key, that's going to be in a script. When we check if we're touching the ground, that's going to be in a script. When we check in if we're jumping or moving right or moving left, that's all going to be in a script. So it's going to make this step event very efficient. It's going to be very fast. It's going to be easy for you guys to understand and pick out areas where perhaps something's not going well. If you're falling through the ground, well, perhaps your ground check isn't right. You don't have to scroll through hundreds of lines of code in your step event. So that's what we're going to be doing right here. We're going to be keeping everything very stateful. So let's start off with something I'm going to be calling script detect key. Okay. Script detect key. Let's create that script now. Scripts, create script. Let's just copy this name. Paste it up here. All right. And we can actually close our step for now. Okay, so if we think about the, the, the functions of this player, what can he do? He can, he can move right, he can move left, he can jump, he can sprint. The default's walk, so he can sprint. And he can duck. So that's, uh, that's how many key presses we need to detect. So right key. We need left key. We need our jump key. We need our sprint key. And we need our duck key. So the right key is a keyboard. Uh, to check, I'm going to get the odd of the D key. All right, then I'm actually going to copy this and paste it for the left. So that's going to be A. If you look at our keyboard, A and D. Then jump key is going to be, I think space is appropriate for this. So that's going to be a keyboard check pressed. And uh, that's VK space. Fantastic. Our sprint key is just going to be a keyboard check on, I'm going to say VK shift. Most games use the shift as a sprint key, so let's keep to that standard. Then our duck key is going to be S. Right over there. Fantastic. Okay, cool. So there we are grabbing the keys, and we'll be able to use any one of these keys in any one of our other scripts later on. So let's accept that. Remember, right, left, jump, sprint, duck. Fantastic. Let's go back to our player. Um, actually, let's create an out of room, outside room, where I'm going to set X to X start and Y to Y start. So I'm going to make these crevasses that the player can fall into, and if he does fall into them, well, he's just going to go back to the beginning. So there we go. That's just to make sure of that. Back into our step event. Do stuff. Okay, so script detect key has been highlighted. Look at that. It's a different color means it has been found. So now that we can grab whatever key is being pressed, let's um, check if the player is on the ground. Script ground check. Again, let's copy that. Let's create a script. Script ground check. Let's expand this. But one thing, before we actually do this ground check, let's create our object. Let's create our object block. Uh, object block. Uh, let's give it that white sprite. Okay, that's fine. Okay, back to script ground check. So, here we're going to say if place meeting our x, which is our player x. Remember, this is going to be in the step of our player, and y plus 1. So, this is one pixel below our player, and object block. We're touching the ground. Cool. Check that out. So if our player is touching a block, bam, we're touching the ground. And that's y plus 1, so that's below us, right? Remember that. Our v speed equals 0. That's a variable we initialized in our create, so that's our vertical speed is 0. We are not jumping. We're not falling. Remember that. We've touched the ground. We're not jumping or falling. Now we need to say, well, if we want to jump, because remember we are on the on the ground, if jump key, that's the key we used in the script key, detect key. So if the jump key, if the space was being pressed, jumping equals true, ESPD equals JSPD, which is our jump speed. But remember we're jumping up, so it's gotta be negative because it's going towards the origin of our room. Cool beans. Otherwise, big on else, 
We're in the air. Okay. So if we're not touching a block below us, we're in the air. And if we're in the air, if VSPD is less than terminal velocity, okay, if our vertical speed is less than terminal velocity, then our VSPD is going to plus equal our gravity. There we go. So we're going to be increasing our vertical speed by the factor of gravity every step until it reaches the terminal velocity. If the sign of our v-speed is 1, okay, then falling equals true. So let's take a look at what sign means. Open up our help. Let's go search. Sign. Make this smaller. Cool. This function returns whether the number is positive, negative, or neither, and returns 1, minus 1, or 0, respectively. So if it's negative, it's going to get a minus 1. If it's positive, it's going to be 1. If it's 0, it's going to return 0. There we go. Sine 458 will return 1. Sine minus 5 will return minus 1. There we go. Okay. So if the sine of our v-speed is 1, then we're falling. All right? So if we have a positive v-speed, we're falling. Check that out. So we're setting this value to true, which we'll be using later to set our sprites. Okay, so that wraps up our ground check. We're touching the ground. We're in the air. Let's set some of our variables. We'll use them later. Okay, so that's ground check. Fantastic. Back to our step. The ground check is now colored in. That script is complete. So in that ground check, we mentioned something about does the player want to jump? Hmm, so that's interesting. So you can only jump if he's on the ground. So how's about we do some jump code next? SCR jump check. Okay, is the player jumping? Okay, let's go to our scripts. Let's create a script for that. Compartmentalize this entire feature into its own little segment of code. So, if we're jumping, which is as simple as saying if jumping, <laughs> pretty cool, huh? We're still gaining altitude. If V speed is less than zero, then we're still jumping. Check that out. So when we push the jump key, V speed is going to equal negative J speed, and that's going to move us up. And gradually, it's going to be reducing by the gravity. So, so long as V speed is less than zero, because it's going to be negative, we're still jumping. We're still gaining altitude. We're going to get to a point where V speed equals zero. There's that moment in time where we are essentially hovering in midair. It's like throwing a ball in the air, and then for a split second in time, it is neither moving up or falling down. It's equalized with gravity. And then it's going to start falling down. So at this point in time, we're still gaining altitude. V speed is less than zero. Otherwise, well, here, yeah, we're falling. Gravity is winning. Jumping equals false. And falling equals true. So later on, when we test some of these things, I'm going to be creating a GUI object that's going to be pretty much just spitting out all these values onto the screen so we can see how things change depending on what the player is doing. So that's going to help us understand most of this code. And that's pretty much our jump check. Very, very simple stuff. And that needs to change, otherwise it's going to explode. And there we go. Let's move back to our step. Okay, so we are detecting what key we're pressing. We are detecting if we're touching the ground. And we are detecting if we're jumping. So how's about we do a left and right check? So let's do a right check. So this is if the player wants to move right. Let's grab this, put it into a script. So if we're moving right, which is as simple as if right key, our direction equals right. We're going to be using that to set the sprite later. 
Let's create a max speed temporary variable. So we're going to be incorporating sprinting, which is something I don't think any of the other platform tutorials have gone over. So that's why we need the variable at line five. Here I'm going to say if sprint key, so if uh, the player is holding down the sh left shift or right shift, so if the player is holding down the shift key, our state is running, our max speed is equal to running max speed, remember that, initialize that in our create, our acceleration is running acceleration. Cool. Otherwise, user is not pressing the shift key. Our state is walking. We'll use that again later to set our sprite. Our max speed is walking max SPD. And our acceleration is walking acceleration. So we don't want to go from zero to max speed and zero to running max speed. That's it's a bit too sudden, it's unrealistic. We want slow acceleration. We want to see progress. The user gets to top speed. If you release the key, he's going to slowly slow down to his top speed of his walking. And if you release any key, he's going to be slowly decelerating to zero, which is standing. And this is where we're going to use that information we've just set. If H speed, that's our horizontal speed, is less than max speed, then h speed plus equals ACC. That's our acceleration. So it's either going to be the walking acceleration or the running acceleration. This piece of code doesn't care what we're doing. All it cares about is the value of ACC. Okay. Otherwise, in this case, the player has released uh, the sprint key. So slow down. If HSPD is greater than max speed, then HSPD minus equals acceleration times two. Okay, so we're going to be slowing down twice as fast as we accelerate. Otherwise, HSPD equals max speed. Cool. And then we get to a point where we are then we get to a point where we have decelerated and we're ready to just move at the speed of our maximum. So there we go, that's pretty cool stuff. Let's go back to our step event. I don't know why I call this SPR, it's supposed to be SCR. Let's make sure we got that right. There we are. So the script left check is going to be very, very similar. So I'm actually going to duplicate the right check. Let's duplicate that. Let's say left. Things to change. Line two is not right check. It is left. Moving left, our direction equals left. Max speed is still zero. Checking if we're sprinting, then our max speed is going to be negative. So that's to the left, negative running max speed. Our acceleration is going to be our running acceleration. Otherwise, we're walking. And when we're walking, our state is walking. Our max speed is negative walking speed. Our acceleration is walking acceleration. So here we say if h speed is greater than, it's the opposite, max speed. Then here we got our H speed. Here we got H speed minus equals acceleration. Otherwise, sprint key release slow down. If H speed is less than max speed, then our H speed is going to be plus equal acceleration times two. 
Otherwise, our edge speed is going to equal max speed. So it's just the exact opposite. Very simple. Once we've done the one, we can just duplicate it and invert everything. So let's say OK to that. So at this point in time, we've got detect key, we've got ground check, we've got jump check, we've got right check, we've got left check, all these checks. <laughs> it's really interesting. At this point in time, all we've got to do is check if we're colliding with a block. We need to check if we're standing. And then we can set our sprites, which is the, the fun bit. So let's do our script collision check. Let's copy that. Let's create our script. There it is. Let's expand this a bit. Okay. So the bit of code I'm going to show you here is going to be very similar to Sean Spaulding and Heartbeast's tutorial. I don't see the need to create something different. It gets the job done, so let's go for it. First, horizontal collisions. If place meeting, very similar to our check ground. X plus H speed. Our Y. So it's horizontal, so you don't have to worry about the Y. Object block. Okay, uh, one more bracket there. Then we're going to say while not place meeting. X plus sign of our H speed. We've got a Y and object block. And one more bracket. And here we're going to say X plus equals the sign of our H speed. Okay, so let me attempt to clarify what this means. So if place meaning our current X plus our horizontal speed and the object block. So if in our next step, we're going to be colliding with object block. Okay, that's what that does. Then it's going to head in here. While we currently haven't collided with that block, increase our x. And you keep doing that until we are touching that block. And then we're going to set our h speed to 0. Cool, and that'll stop us. Then we need to uh, set our horizontal position. And that's just x plus equals h speed. Cool, very interesting piece of code. It works quite well. Uh, it's a little confusing, but it doesn't matter. So now let's do our vertical collision. And I'm going to say if place meeting our x. So we don't have to worry about the x in this one. So this is our y. <clears throat> this is our y plus our v speed. And object block. Okay, there we go. Again, while not place meeting x, y plus our sign v speed and object block y plus plus equals sign v speed and then eventually v speed equals zero and now we need to set our vertical position y plus equals v spd. So in a nutshell, if the x coordinate h speed pixels in front of us is meeting up with our block, then while our x plus sign, so that's remember it's going to give us a 1, a minus 1, or a 0. So if x plus 1, for example, is not meeting with object block, then increase our x by 1. And it'll keep doing that, and 1, and 1, and 1, and 1. If we're moving to the right, for example, keep going 1 until it'll jump out of this while, because then we are colliding with object block, and then it'll stop us, right? And then we 0, we 0. And that's going to update our final x, which at the end is going to be 0, and then we are stopping. 
It's the same with vertical collisions. If our current position, our current x, y, plus the v-speed, whatever v-speed is, so that's in pixels, if that many pixels ahead of our position, or in this case above or below, is colliding with object block, then while whatever sign is, while 1 or minus 1 or 0 above or below us is not colliding with object block, then increase our y by whatever that sign is, so 1 or neg negative 1 if we're moving up or down. So that's going to make sure we don't go through blocks above us, and also sort of like a, a ground check. And then eventually vSpeed equals 0, update our position. So, you know, that gradually gets us to that object block without us ending up inside him. Do remember that uh, you should set up some very good collision masks for your sprites. I'll go over that in the next video. And things will look really lovely. Got to make sure that all your things will look very lovely. I'll go into that stuff in greater detail later. Cool stuff. So that's our collision check. So nothing should go wrong here. This looks good. This looks fantastic. Okay, so let's go back to our steps. So what we got? Right, left, collision. Let's do our stand check. Stand check. Okay, create a script. So, uh, determine if we're standing. So, what is defined as standing? Well, standing means we are not pushing the left key and we're not pressing the right key. Standing also means that we might be pushing the left key and the right key at the same time. Standing also means that uh, we could be not jumping and not falling. So that's everything that constitutes standing. So if we're not pushing the left key and we're not pushing the right key, or we're pushing the left key and the right key, see so those are all wrapped up in there, and we're not jumping and we're not falling, then we are standing. So what can we do if we're standing? Well, we can we can duck, I suppose. So if uh, duck key, so if the user is ducking, state equals ducking, else our state finally equals standing. So there we go. If we satisfy this condition, we have the chance to duck, but if they're not ducking, then we are definitely standing. So, um, how's about let's slow down um, our movement when no keys are being pressed. How about we do that? If our direction is left, well, then if our h speed is less than zero, let's um, let's increase our horizontal speed by friction. Okay, so that's going to slow us down. Otherwise, our horizontal speed is zero. There we go. Cool. So we stopped. Let's just copy this and do the same for right. So if direction equals right, it's the opposite. If h speed is greater than zero, then h speed equal is going to be then h speed is going to be minus equal friction. Otherwise, our h speed is zero. Cool stuff. So that covers uh, checking if we're standing, and if we are standing, we can maybe duck. If we're not ducking, we're standing. And finally, let's slow down everything when we are standing. So that's going to slowly decelerate us to the standing position. Okay, fantastic. So I'm going to... So let's go to our game room quickly. I know things aren't complete just yet, but um, who cares? Let's see if we can test this. Maybe we'll come across some errors we can fix real quick. So let's create some blocks uh, there. There, 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 there. Let's make a gap. 
Cool. And let's get our player out. Let's put him right on top of that. Cool. So it's very basic. Um, his sprite isn't going to change, but we're going to see him bouncing around. We can maybe fall through things. We can check our collisions. The only thing we haven't done at this point is change our sprites depending on his state. Okay, cool. Save. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So I've just added a few more blocks here so we can see that all of our collisions are working. So we have our ground check. We have our collision check above us. How cool is that? We can jump. Let's see if we can walk. See, it's very slow. Sprint, jump. Check that out and slow down to a stop. Very cool. So everything's working as we expect it to. So at this point in time, when we do add our... There we go, made it. Our different sprites and sub-images is going to look really, really, really cool. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please stay tuned for part two where we are going to be doing our sprites. If you like this video as well as many of my other ones, you can check out my Patreon campaign. I really do appreciate your support. If you want to play a really cool addictive arcade mobile game, check out Element Earth. It's now on the Amazon App Store. You can post how long you last. I do look forward to seeing how long most of you can survive. It's really fun. You can find the project files straight in the description. So that'll be part one. will be everything up to this point. You can follow me on various social media networks. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those sort of things. When this tutorial series is finished, we'll be jumping back onto networking to implement it into that. So it's going to be really cool to have a platform game with other people in it. And at that point in time, the possibilities are endless. We can have multiple areas. We can have um, combat. We can have trading. We could have NPCs. I mean, these are all kinds of really cool things that I'm looking forward to sharing with all of you. So please stay tuned for that.